I just want to remind you. All right, cool. So yeah, recording is on. Um, <clears throat> so once again, in the previous session, we were talking about last in, first out stack. And uh, in this session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement a stack in Python and show you how, how it's done. Now, it, what the stack in Python, the list by itself takes care of a whole lot of things. So you don't necessarily need to implement stack in Python, but just for the information, like what, how we implement different methods, I'm going to do that. And then I will ask you to implement Q after that. So once again, coming here, Stack. So what I'm going to do is my st stack class is going to be a list, a Python list in which the index zero will be at the bottom of the index and index as we move out, this will be the top of the index. So I will add item by using append and I will remove item by using a pop. Append and pop always add and remove items from the end of the list. So in order to create this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class stack. Is the, is the font okay? If, if the font is not okay, just let me know. And I will let you, I will use the font. And the first, first thing is the initialization code. So I'm going to put some initialization code. Now, how do I want to initialize the stack? Suppose I want to say that uh, I want to initialize stack by like an empty stack. Suppose that. So I'm not going to pass anything while initializing the stack. So I just, when well, I'll just call a stack object and a stack should be created. And let's say my stack internally is a list. I'm gonna call it whatever items. And it's an empty list. So let's, let's just call our stack class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stack s equals to stack. So this is my stack and I have just defined the, uh, the only instance variable here is the items, which is an empty list at the moment. So let's run this code. Oh, sure. So nothing is happening at the moment because I'm not printing anything. So what I can do is I can just say print s. Once again, this will print some random stuff like this. There's a stack object at some location. So right now, my stack is basically an empty list. That's how I initialize. So whenever I run this code as equals to stack, this is gonna call the init and init will initialize an empty list. That's it. Now, what I need to do is suppose, the very first thing suppose I want to do is, is I want to be able to print my stack, okay? So in order to print, for example, using this print s, print of uh, this, uh, this stack object, I will need to override the underscore underscore str method. So if you're not familiar with Python, then don't worry too much at this point. And I'm gonna come to methods pretty soon. I'm using this so I can print whatever I want to print. And this will return a string object. So I'm going to say uh, return str of self dot items. Let's run this code. And now you will see that instead of that particular, this type of an object that we are printing, 
this guy we are now printing the empty list so just a quick overview <clears throat> in python whenever we ask python to print something python uses the this this method to understand how to print that object <clears throat> if that if that method is not present in a class definition then python will use the representation the string representation of the object and that representation is a generic representation which is something like this so here i have overridden that with my own custom behavior that whenever somebody tries to print a stack they should be printing this list which is self dot items this list and i need to cast it to a string so i cast it to a string and then i return it so that's how it is working now let's come to the the real methods of a stack the three main methods of a stack are basically push so in a stack you want to push something suppose you want to push item x and the next item that we want to do probably is pop and the final item is let's say peak so those are the main three items in a stack right so basically we have push that you want to push something to a stack pop that is you want to return an item from the top of the stack and then peak that is you want to look at the top of the stack push suppose i have a list like this suppose this list is called items actually let me use a new page suppose i have this list called items this is index 0 1 2 and it goes like this suppose i have an item x that i need to push what would be the command i would use to add to the end of list append we can use an append so it's pretty simple you will see just this is uh, essentially it will be just a name change for append to push so i'm going to just say self dot items dot append x that's pretty much it i don't need to worry about any size or anything because python is going to take care of is going to indefinitely expand the array to whatever size you want so let's just add some calls here okay so suppose you say s dot push let's say 10 and then similarly i start push whatever 5 and then print s we come back here and we run this and you will see that now this i'm essentially printing list i'm just appending to a list and i'm printing the list but i am exposing the push call rather than the append call so anybody who is going to import the stack module will be calling the push now we are only writing one liner statement underneath that which is this now similarly pop if i need to pop anything python already provides a pop method so the life becomes really simple here dot pop and we can return that item so we are essentially doing a list dot pop that's what we are doing so let's call the pop there is a problem in this method and the problem i will see in a bit suppose we do s dot pop and we do print s again s dot pop so let's save it run it so you will notice that I am actually printing this ten five and then five is popped. Now after that, in line number twenty eight, I have popped again. Now if I sorry, if I pop once more, that will be a problem, right? Because list has two items and we are trying to pop. on an empty list what happens when you pop from an empty list you get an index error 
that pop from the empty list. So essentially you will have to write some code to really make sure that you are not popping from an empty list. Like you can prevent this error. Otherwise you will raise an exception. It's okay to raise an exception depending on whatever condition you want to create. Or you can come to an understanding that if the list is empty, basically you don't pop anything. You just pop, keep popping none. So essentially you can just write something here. If len of you know, if self dot uh, items, that is if self dot items has anything, then essentially return this else return none. So now let's run this code again and there's no problem anymore. So you can keep popping and you will not raise an error. So this behavior may or may not be correct, depending on the situation you're trying to implement. In different situations, if a list is, if a stack is empty and somebody is trying to pop from the stack, then we may want to say that we may, we may want to raise that error. So it might be a good behavior what we had. In other situations, it might be okay to return none or print some error something like that. But for now, let's just keep it like this. I'm just gonna get rid of this. And keep the original behavior that is it's gonna return an error if there's an incorrect pop. Now, let's just get rid of line 29. For you, you are not checking like here, it's actually automatically checking like first out, uh, whatever the last time first out, but you are, we are not explicitly checking also like what is the last time and it's, it's actually doing that first out. We are just popping it. Yeah. You should what, check that. So <clears throat> let's, let's build a list. Actually, let's, um, let me open a terminal to better understand, explain this. Suppose we are here. Okay. Let me open a terminal. Suppose I have a list and I call it a stack yeah. S equals to a list. Yeah. And if I do S dot append of 10, then S becomes this Then S dot append of five, then S becomes this. Yeah. If I do S dot pop, then pop automatically pops the last item, right? So append and pop are automatically push and pop behavior. If you pass an index to pop, then pop will pop that particular index. Otherwise it will always pop the last element, okay. which is exact behavior that we are looking for anyway. Yeah. So you can do this. And similarly, uh, peak means you want to look at this top of the stack. Some people call it stack top method. So essentially you just re returning the, whatever the last, item at the stack is. So what is the last item present at, at a particular index? You can just write self dot items of oh. minus one. Oh. Once again, there's a problem here. We are, the problem here is that we are hard coding an index here saying that give me the last index, but what if the stack is empty? It will result in an error. So suppose I do s dot pop or suppose this is an empty stack. Suppose this is an empty stack here. And I write s dot peak. So if I do that, it will result in an error. So return self dot items minus one list indexes out of range. So we have to always have to make sure in pop and peak <clears throat> that we are taking care of these things. There are two ways to take care of these things that we leave the code as it is. That is if the stack is empty, we raise this error and it's up to the caller, whoever is importing our module to 
use a try and accept statement and handle that situation in that code. Or we can uh, hard code something ourselves, like how I showed you. <clears throat> so essentially, basically, this will be a very simple implementation of a stack class. I tried doing the same thing in Java. It was giving me an error because stack class is already defined. Stack class is already defined. Where is stack class already defined? It would be in some, some library or something. I tried or Java and it was giving me error and I need to actually start with a stack test or something. I need to rename my class file or something. But in Python, what you are showing is we don't get those errors. So you're saying in Java, the stack is already defined? Yeah, I, I got that error. I was doing that, uh, like I was just using the stack and it was saying the stack is already defined. Yeah, I think looks like, yes. So there's a stack, class stack in Java util. Yeah. So that's good. I, mean, I was thinking how to, how do I do the same thing what you have done over here? And then I got, I've gone back to previous thing. Yeah, so you can name it something else. You can name it something like my stack or something like that. But then how do we uh, like increase the size of the array or something like those those kind of thing I was thinking because you're you are getting all the internal methods and you're doing this. Yeah. So in Java, you can use the array list or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Internally and then just keep adding from the end and remove from the end. Yeah. Essentially, you just have to keep your one one uh, index fixed and add and append from the append and remove from the other index. Okay. <clears throat> so something like this you can do. Now, um, given I have shown you this, shown you shown all of you this. Can you develop? A Q class, a class Q. Remember in a Q, what happens? You insert, suppose you have a Q, you insert from one end and you, so insert is, so you NQ from one end and you DQ from other end. Or you can insert or remove whatever you want to call it. So given what I have shown you, can you implement the list class? No. Sorry, Q class, my mistake. I'm going to give you a few minutes. You feel free to either paste it on the Zoom chat or the Discord chat, whatever code you write.
Anyone? Can you paste your code there uh, in this channel? Like we could see and we can take it as a reference. Let me do that. I've posted I've posted it in the channel. Yeah, that the code that's on the chat from Jack Mar that looks good to me. Essentially, it just needs one small change in the whole code. I'm going to paste a link to a book. That book is actually a pretty good book for studying the data structures and algorithms in Python, specifically in Python. So you guys can take a look at that. So I'm currently looking into it. You will find all of this code there as, there as well. Yeah, this is pretty good actually. Let me paste that link of that book. You guys can check that book out. It's pretty good and you can buy it from Amazon as well if you want to. It's just a really good book. I have I have read it half, uh, maybe three years back. All right, so let me see, let me modify this code a bit to make it a queue. So what I'm going to do is first I'm just going to quickly copy the whole thing into a different file called queue and just basically have this here. 
So now I'm just going to replace the stack <clears throat> with Q. That's it. So this is a class Q now. And this also needs to move to Q. So let's let's uh, complete the definition of these Q. So first of all, we have the init. Init is same. We still have the same list. The print is still the same here because we're going to print the same way. Now push. There is no push in the queue, so we have uh, what you call as is insert or n queue, whatever you want to call it. So insert, you want to insert an item. So we cannot use the append. We'll have to insert from the index zero. So we'll just call the insert method on that list, and we will say zero and the item x. And then we have to pop. pop. It's not called pop, it's called remove. So I'm just gonna say uh, remove. And then essentially self.items.pop. And there is no peak. So essentially, now you have <clears throat> this remaining as the definition of Q, a pretty simple one. So I'm just going to create a Q equals to QU. And I'm going to say Q print Q. Then just quickly Q dot insert N and Q dot insert maybe five and then in Q dot remove. Print Q. <clears throat> what essentially you will see is the opposite behavior of what we saw in this, what we saw in the stack. So let's run this code. So when you run it, we need to, let's do another print here. Print Q. <clears throat> so essentially you have this Q, the five gets, uh, so first of all, 10 gets added and then five gets added and then basically 10 gets removed. So essentially you have slightly different behaviors. So the 10 comes first, so the 10 goes out first. Maybe I'll I'll just for this for this help helping this whole discussion out, I'm just gonna add a print statement here. Then I'm gonna remove it. So I'm just gonna say print self.items right now. So that will at least show you the the state of Q on every single insert. I'm just going to remove this D. So first 10 is added, then five is added. You can see the five is added at the index zero and 10 gets to the front position. This is the front position. And then after removing 10 gets removed and five is there. So essentially that is a Q. We just have a one line code change. That is we just inserting inst instead of appending and we are inserting from the index zero. That essentially is a simple queue. Any questions? Finally, in the world of linked list, what happens is what you have here is uh, in linked list, as I mentioned, you have nodes. The node has a value and the item to, to find the next node. 
which has a value and then pointer to the next. The first one is called head. And the last one essentially is nothing. It's none. So given that the case, given that is the case, most of the time in any situation, you will be given a node class and then you will be given a pointer to the start of the linked list and you have to reach the end. So what will happen essentially is that you will be given something like a node. So let me write a node.py. What the, that would be is a class node. And essentially that class node would be that you will define an init here. So you can create a node either with some value or you can basically create an empty node up to you. So let's just create an empty node. So essentially you will have self dot value equals to something. Let's just say none and self dot next. It has two attributes. equals to none at the moment. Coming back here, once again, node has a value and a next, where the next points to the next node. That's all a node is. And if you want to initialize a node, Can just basically write n1 equals to node print n1 and run this code essentially it just creates a node object that's all it does Now you can do a whole lot of things. So these nodes when arranged together will form the linked list. So <clears throat> let's change this a bit and let's create a node with some value X. So self dot value becomes X. And Suppose that I am going to create a node with value 10. So this is fine. There's no problem so far. Now you can manually create a linked list. So you can create node n1 equals to 10, n110, and then you can create n2 equals to node of five and n3 equals to node of 15. Now you can manually do this. You can say n1 dot next equals to n2 and n2 dot next equals to n3. And head equals to n1. So essentially what I did in this code is I created three nodes. First, I created a node, node object called N1 and I assigned the value 10 to it. And initially this was none because my, you can see my initialization code has this as none. Then I created the next node N2 with the value five and this is still none. And then I created N3 with the value 15, this set as none. So now in order to form a linked list, once again, I'm doing it node by node manually. So I need to point this guy to this guy. So I'm going to say n1 dot next, which is this attribute should point to n2. So instead of this none, this 
this will start pointing this. So that is this line n1 dot next equals to n2. And then n2 dot next equals to n3. So I'm gonna instead of this guy here. Now this is pointing to this guy. For n3, I've not modified anything. That means this is the last node because this is none. The next is none. That means this is the last node. And finally, I've said head equals to n1. That means there is a name called head, which is going to point to n1. So that is, I formed a manual, a link list manually. So in this situation, suppose I have this, uh, let me save it and run it. Make sure there's no syntax error. If I wanted to print all the nodes, right? I can just say, I can just begin head dot well. Let's just say I'm going to traverse the link list. I'm going to say current equals to head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to traverse this link list once again manually. So I'm going to create a current variable and I'm going to point it to whatever head is pointing to. So I'm going to point it here. Okay. And I'm going to say print current dot value. Then I'm going to say current equals to current dot next. Then I'm going to again say print current dot value. Then I'm going to say again, current equals to current dot next. print current dot value. Let's just see how this code reacts. So you will know that I'm printing 10, 5, 15. Now, so what am I doing in this code? Everything is manual. There is no looping. There is no function. I have created a linked list by creating three nodes and linking them by in my code, hard coded. Then I'm looping in this way that I'm saying, current equals to this head at the moment. So current is pointing to head, which is N1. And I'm saying print current dot value. So current dot value is 10, 10 gets printed. Then I'm saying current equals to current dot next. So that means current becomes the next of current, which is this. So current moves to this guy. Then it prints current dot value. Then it goes to current dot next here and it prints current dot value. So that's how the link list has been linked together. See, it is not an array, it's a node, which has a reference here next, which is a reference to the next node. If I do again, the same thing, if I do the same thing again, that basically I say current equals to current dot next, and print current dot value. Then essentially, I'm going to get an error because at this point of time, you see, it's a none type error. I say it's an attribute error which saying none type object has no attribute name value. So after this, if I say current equals to current dot next, then current will go to none. Current dot next at the moment is none. So current is none. And when you say none dot value, so none does not have any attribute called value, which is the error here. So essentially in lead code or in any programming problem, what they do is they create a node type of a class. If you go to any lead code link list problem right now, you will be able to see that they give you this declaration and internally they create a link list using one of these approaches, either manually or some with some code. And they just give you a head and then you have to make do rest of the work. So instead of all this manual work that I've done here, for example, this one, we can get rid of this and write a loop here to do the same work. So let's come here and just get rid of this. So I'm going to say 
current equals to head now i can write a loop and say while current that means while the current exists that means it is not none or you can explicitly write something like while current is not equals to none do something or i can you can just write while current so that will make sure that it is not none the while loop will execute while current is not none print current dot value and then current equals to current dot next so this while loop will execute now printing the value of current and then moving the current to current dot next at any point when current becomes none the loop will terminate so let's run this code you will see the output is still the same without any error the reason because the while loop terminates so how does this loop is how does this loop working you have current so initialize i initialize current with n1 with the head which is n1 so current is n1 in this statement then we say while current so current is not none that is good we say current print current dot value let's just add a bit more fanciness to this syntax so it will execute like this a proper linked list type of situation so i mean it just looks a little better that's all now so in this line i'm saying current equals to head and current is not none because it's pointing to n1 so print current dot value so that gets printed n1 dot value is 10 then in the next line i say current equals to current dot next so current becomes n2 i go to the top of the loop is while n2 n2 is not none not empty so we are good so we print current dot value again and then we go to the next and then we do the same thing again and then we go to the next so we reach n3 printing the value 10 5 and 15 now the next time current equals to current dot next so at this point then n3 dot next is none so current becomes none at this point current is none when i point when i go back to the top of the loop and i see this is none so no more this body of the loop will be executed and that's how you traverse a linked list you create a linked list and you traverse by the same approach you set a pointer or a reference to the head and then you loop through that head you loop through that pointer till that pointer becomes none any question okay uh, if no question then uh, i'm going to end the session and for the next week uh, i would like to get an understanding so you, would you want me to continue on recursion or would you want me to solve some problems in linked list like adding a node at a port certain position deleting a node from a certain position and all those things so how about if you can give us those problems for homework and we can give it a try that will be better yes that's a good suggestion so i can give you those problems for homework i can specifically give you some lead code problems that you can try if you want to and we will have these uh, lectures in on youtube to refer back to right by then so last couple of videos i have not uploaded but i will upload them today yes so okay. you will get those awesome
also starting august i just wanted to quickly tell you something this starting august i will be running a full four month course on uh, data structures and algorithms so this, uh, how we are doing right now is i'm taking bits and pieces of stuff and i'm giving it you know, like individual topics but i'm going to run a full course like how i run python so august september october november four months and uh, if you guys are interested you are free to feel free to join that one as well i'll create the invite at some point of time in this week all right thank you thank you